Okay, so it is 6.35 p.m. Um, we will call the meeting to order. Um, this is the regular meeting of the Select Board, August 1st, 2022. Um, in attendance here, we have Suzanne, Charlie, Mark, and Emily. Joining via Zoom is Sue. And I think that's, oh. I'll do it. You want to do it? Um, and I think it's just Sue on the Zoom so far. We'll see. one up in the corner. That's um, us. That's us. Oh, yeah. Right. So that's Sue. Um, so first, uh, first item as always is to make any changes to the agenda. Are there any changes to be made to the agenda, additions or deletions? I had a, a driveway permit for Silvos. Matt and Sarah. Um, I know if we could just mention it this time, maybe we could put it on the next agenda. I don't think we're going to do it till after our next meeting. So okay. I, mean, I cool. can just go over it this meeting. We'll add the driveway permit. Them. Yeah. Cool. I can also and, give you a oops, sorry. And uh, Cote Road, I met with Don. So I want to kind of give an update on that too. Okay. Yeah. Doing them today? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Great. A few things. Cool. Any other additions? Can I give a 30 second update on where we're at with website stuff? Yep. Great. Thanks. Cool. Awesome. Any other additions or deletions to be um, made? All right, hearing none, then we'll move on to approval of the minutes. Um, first set of minutes. Uh, so we have minutes from, oh, first a clarification. I do have a change to the agenda. It's a, it's a typo. Um, we're approving the minutes of 718 and 726, oh, yeah. not 618 and 626. Yeah. Um, so uh, I don't have these minutes pulled up. Give me one second. I'll just make sure we haven't pulled up so I know who was here. Our 718 meeting was our regular meeting. That's a regular meeting. Yeah, 718. We were all, we're all here for yeah. that one. Okay, and the 726 meeting was the special meeting. We were all here for that yeah. one as well. Okay, cool. All right. Were you zooming on our That was the one before I was zooming on. Okay, but we were all here. So, um, so I do have one amendment to be made to the me the minutes for the seven twenty six meeting, and that is that Larry and Anita um, were present via Zoom. So we will add Larry and Anita to the minutes for seven twenty six as being present via Zoom. So I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of seven eighteen as amended. Charlie. Yep. Yeah. I wasn't at the 726 meeting, and I think my name is on there. That was last Monday, right? Uh, Tuesday. 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 Tuesday, I was not on the meeting. Okay, so so we'll amend 726 to show that Larry and Anita were present via no, Zoom. 718. No, no, 718 for, for Larry, Larry and Anita. No, 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 Seven, 726 was oh. Larry and Anita. So we'll, we'll okay. add Larry and Anita and take away soon. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So 718 was fine? 718 minutes were fine. It was 726 that had the changes. Okay, so I'll change my motion to approve the minutes of 718 as written. Okay. Is there a second? One second. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll vote. All those in favor of approving the minutes as written, please show how I saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, motion carries. Um, next is the minutes of 726. This would be a, a motion to approve as amended. I'll make the motion to approve the minutes of 726 as amended. Great, is there a second? A second. Great, any discussion? Hearing none, will vote. All those in favor, please uh, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. Motion carries. 
Um, next up is public works. And I just want to just put kind of as a marker for us out there, I, I am hoping to kind of move through the bulk of the agenda within the next 20 minutes. Um, so that we have the bulk of our time tonight to do the contract discussions. Because mm -hmm. that's going to take up some time. Um, so just let's be efficient. <laughs> All right, so moving on to public works, roads and bridges. Um, Mark, any general updates prior to the driveway permit and the road update? Um, I just have a paving update. Um, looks like the end of next week. Uh, we'll probably be doing prep work on Tuesday and paving uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And pray just in case. No. I think it'll take two days, but put the other day in there just in case the rain or something. Great. And that's hunger for you, right? Yeah, hunger for me. Okay. So I, I let Liz know, and she was we letting everybody know. So we can plan on it. Okay, great. And oh, did you let Doug know? Yeah, I'll let Doug know. Yeah. Well, Aaron knows. I'll be out. And then, uh, so yeah, we have a driveway permit from um, Sarah and Matthew Silva on Black Falls Road. Um, they have a shared driveway with um, the house at the end of the road, and so they're making a separate driveway for their house. Their house sits in the back, so they have a shared driveway, so they want to make a separate driveway for their house, which is right up the road from the one they have. It's on the lower side of the road, so it won't need a culvert. And I won't have to look at it today. It shouldn't be a problem. Great. Uh, so I approved it. And then we can bring it up the next week. Okay. Get on the agenda. Great. That would be page 13? Uh, 15, I think. Next yeah, page. 15. Yeah. Okay, so we'll warn it. Um, we'll warn it for that. Yeah. Okay, great. And then, you got a Cote Road update? Yes, I met with Don, uh, the person that's giving the land to the uh, easement or it's a uh, call uh, Called a dedicated gen. I just forget, but yeah, yeah, giving us giving us land for a road. Or yeah, us a road. so the whole situation is the town owns right after the bridge, and we've been plowing this section of the road. And he actually did the work on the turnaround, fixed the turnaround um, for us up there, and so now he's just gonna the town will take over that that uh, twenty feet. He's gonna give us twenty feet right on the road, and then the turnaround, the town. So which is. And then we'll, we already take care of it already, so it's nothing, nothing new. Um, so it's just to make it official for his records and everybody's. So this is the way that this is, yeah. So I don't see a problem with it, so we can go ahead and, and uh, sign a contract or do the paperwork or whatever it needs to be done. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, so is that something that you can get together for the, the meeting on the 15th? I'll have to talk to Barry and see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get that on the agenda. Yep. Are you exactly ready for that? Great. Awesome. Good. Glad you had a chance to get up with that with him. I know he was anxious to get that going. Yeah, he was gone. Like, um, yeah, they were gone. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he called me this morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. <coughs> Uh, anything else under roads and bridges? Um, we've got working on getting the rest of the roadsides mold. We've we got the village all done now. We're working on the center. We finished up Reagan Road and Amadon and Rushford Valley. All this that end um, today. Okay. And now we'll get to Gibu and Reagan Road and those. And hopefully by the end of this week we'll have all, all done. So that that'll be done. Okay. And then. Mark's been hauling in sand in the garage, so we get sand by all too. Then I've got a few culverts to change and stuff, so I'm getting those big saved and, and uh, get, those, get those done. Okay. You know, there are a few problem spots this winter, so I want to get them done. So we don't have a problem next year. So just to be clear, you're looking at replacing a few culverts? 
There's a couple driveway culverts that have been in for a long time and they failed, so that it's our responsibility to change them after they've been in. So two of them failed and then water was going into the road, so it caused problems in the spring. So there's one on Amadon and then one on Reagan Road. And then we'll, we'll do a little bit of ditching on each side of those culverts. Water has been an issue for quite a few years, so we're, we're going to fix it. Okay. Have you, got, have, you, have you got quotes for culverts yet? No, I, I've got the culverts. You have the culverts? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll just get quotes. Are those ones that we had just in inventory? Yeah, we've got some in inventory. So okay. I've got the culverts. It takes a 15 inch culvert for those right. So I've got the culverts, I just need to uh, get a hold some estimates to get them in. And, uh, I'll try to have that for the next meeting. Okay. So that'd be something you'd contract out? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't have an excavator. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Do you do your own ditch work or do you have to contract an excavator for that too? We have to contract that out. We don't have an excavator. Okay. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just to put it on your radar, I don't know how essential it is or not, but I know that my neighbor up on Primary Bridge. Yeah, I've talked to him. Us to yeah, see right about above that. his. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, his corner there. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So we'll keep an eye out for the quotes for that. We yeah. target that at 15 meeting. Um, what about quotes for Black Falls and West Hill? You have those projects still. I, I've got, I put it out to Dirt Tech and then uh, Goodhue excavating and uh, and Tetros. So they're all putting this together for me so on those projects. Okay. Yeah. So I'll try to get, get those going. Okay, great. And you think that those will still, those projects will still be able to happen this season? Uh, I mean, they're going to be done by uh, end of June next year. So some of them, we may have to may not be able to do the spring. We'll see what the contractors say, mm -hmm. you know, how, how available they are. But, I mean, we only can start doing it July 1st, so, you know, they only give you like a year. Yep. Um, so, I'll see how the contractors, a lot of them like to do things like early in the spring before their big projects get going. They can do a project like this. So, it may be, may be spring, but we'll try to get everything in, in line before then. Okay. Yeah. But even, even if it's in spring, I mean, we can do some of the work, but most of it will be contracted out, so. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Uh, anything else on roads and bridges? That's it. Okay. Uh, buildings and grounds, and B, um, the warned item here is just the 98 Main Street location. So we haven't formally talked about this as a board since it happened, but the post office last Monday um, executed an emergency evacuation of the 98 Main Street location, their words, not mine, um, and relocated operations to the village um, location. Um, we had absolutely no advanced warning of this. I mean, everybody here knows this. We've mm -hmm. given them information about that building for the past six years. They've ignored it. Um, I don't technically know what the trigger was for them to pull this. I'm, I'm guessing that some other federal entity like OSHA got involved, which basically made them. I don't know if that's a fact or not. They haven't communicated that to any of us as to what the reason was, so we can only kind of surmise. Um, Basically, where things stand now is that people who want to get box pickup are able to at the village. Um, home delivery is all going through the village. Um, basically, what I've told Tim and Jerry, who is the, they call him the POOM, the Postal Operations Manager for the district. Um, I've told them multiple times in writing and um, in voicemails and conversations with Tim that we have an appraisal schedule for the 98 Main Street location in August, like two weeks from now. If they're not going to go back to that location, we need to know that because that sale would be hinging upon them renewing that lease. Um, we've been told by some folks in Colorado that, that work for the buildings and whatever department of, the, of them that they don't want to go anywhere. This guy Jerry has told us that they are looking at all their options, whether that's leaving the place, finding something new, building something. I mean, he basically 
was pulling stuff out of his ass, lost him, right? Um, so they don't know what the hell they're doing. But I told them basically within like a week we need to know whether or not they're looking to stay at that building or not. Whether or not we'll have an answer, who knows. Um, the best part of the whole conversation though, and happy to say this on the record, is that this guy Jerry, who is the Postal Operations Manager now, he just took that job over, but he took it back over after being away for two years. So Jerry is actually the same coom that was here three plus years ago, going back to when this all started. And so to have that guy be the one in here, you know, framing surprise about all this BS, to me is just an example of how broken the postal service is. And I have emails and records of communications with that guy going back years. So it's ridiculous. So anyway, that's the next marker there is they need to give us a determination of their intentions um, because we're not going to drop five grand or six grand on the appraisal if we don't have to. Yeah. Um, and then on the appraisal quote, just um, so everybody's aware, um, so the quote of, it's $4,500 was the appraisal quote. Um, I did talk with a guy in town, Pat Kalikas, who does this kind of work in the commercial banking sector. Yeah. Yeah. So he can look at this and say, is that, you know, a, an accurate quote or is it, you know, out of left field? Yeah. And he basically said that um, that quote, 4500 for that appraisal, it sounds a little high, but it is certainly in line with the industry standard. Yeah for that kind of a building, mostly because um, it'll be really hard for them to find comps for it. Um, so he basically said yes. Yeah. They're, not, they're not trying to fleece you. Yeah, yeah. I thought that. Yeah. 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 So if the Postal Office Service doesn't, or the POOM doesn't get back to us um, within that two weeks, are we canceling the appraisal based on their lack of response? Or? I don't know. Um, I honestly don't know, but I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to. If I haven't heard from him by Friday. I'm gonna reach back out to him and say I need an answer on this next week. Um, you've had how many months to figure this out? How many months to answer this question? I've been asking you about this, and so um, I guess I don't have an answer for you. Yeah. Um, we'll have to decide that as a board what we want to do. But when, when is your lease expired? November, November first, I think. November first. Yeah. So that's where that stands. Anyway, anything else on buildings and grounds on your front? No? Okay. Uh, there's no water commissions that I'm issues that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, the Longley Bridge tap is carried over just from before. Um, same update there. We're trying to figure out where we can get more money to fill the gaps in the construction budget. Everybody is on the same page that it's paused, the state, the contractors, the engineers. So there's no update there other than that's still pending. Item E, this was through you bids for the town truck. I didn't know if you'd had. We, we supposedly have two. Oh, we do? Um, are they in the. Are they in their folder? They I haven't. I got to grab the folder. Yeah. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'm here, Susan. I mean, Sue. Hey, Susan. She is. She can't hear me. Doesn't seem like. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's going on. So we have two, two beds here. So we will now unseal the bids. Looks like this one was already unsealed. Uh, Town of Montgomery bid on 2016 F550 plow truck with Sander. dump. Yeah. Uh, 19,500 as is from Leslie Coons. Um, Fairfax, Vermont. Yeah, he gave it there. Yeah. So we have one bid at 19500 
we have a second bid. Can it a concern? Lots Automotive is placing a bid of twenty-two thousand for the town truck, two thousand sixteen Ford F five fifty dump truck, sixty-four thousand five hundred seventy miles. VIN number listed comes with plow, plow mount, sander, cap controls for sander, extra set six of rims. Vehicle is currently still in use by the town. It may be used for some extended time. Vehicle was viewed on August first. Everything was functional. Actual purchase is contingent on vehicle being exact condition as viewed on August 1st with no more than 500 miles added to the current odometer reading. And that they, I think we're going to have to keep it probably around the 17th um, because the other truck is ready, but uh, Aaron said the loan paperwork and everything isn't ready yet. And then the next meeting will have to put uh, it up. So um, he said the earliest we get it will be the 17th. And do you think we can keep the added mileage under 500? Yeah, I'm even put it that way. I gotta go to Burlington. With that? Bring water samples in. So. Yeah. Is that something you can do with your truck and then go back mileage on? I can. Yeah. I think that'd be a better, a better. Uh, Try to limit the use. Of it. Yeah, just to limit yeah. the use of it. Because if we can keep it, if we can, if we yeah. can stick to this, then. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was hoping the new, the new truck would be so. Yes, I can. Uh, do you want to see these? Yeah, I think that's reasonable for me. I looked up the blue book value and I've between 20 and 25. have any discussion or questions regarding the bids that we've received? Great. Um, if there's not, is there a motion to accept one of the bids? I would motion to accept the bid from Lutz's, but with an amendment that it has no more than a thousand miles more than what it has on it now, just in case we need that position. Oh. Okay. Um, so go back to them and, and Would actually I negotiate. Essentially just get them a counter on yes. So basically the, the, the motion is to counter what's automotive offer Or to amend their offer. Well, I think it's time to be a counter offer, yeah. right? Okay, so Emily's moved to counter Lutz Automotive um, with a not to exceed of 1,000 miles prior to the sale. Is there a second? I'll second. Great. Any other discussion? Um, do you think, like Mark, if you could do things like take your own truck to Burlington, do you like strongly think that you could keep it under 500? Because I wouldn't want them to come back and be like, well, in that case, then we'll only give you 20,000. Well, I'm hoping she can get the table to turn faster on the other truck and get the other truck and it's ready to go. So it's uh, just, we may just have to have a special meeting to sign paperwork, but we could probably get the other one sooner. I mean, it's, it's all ready to go. So what, who needs to do what paperwork? Well, it's just a loan paperwork, and then the board has to approve. You know, I, I know last time we approved, we approved the loan. So Aaron was saying it just hasn't been pressed um, through the process yet. The bank. The it's bank. through the closing stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then she needed a copy of the title for the insurance, to put insurance on it before we knew it, too. 
So the sooner we get that truck, we'll just fine. Okay. Any other questions? So the motion is to, ex to counter Lutz's bid at 22,000 just to amend to amend the not to exceed 10,000 miles. That's yeah, still that that's still comfortable with people, yeah. or do we want to? I mean, probably 500 is fine. And if I don't want to go over all, yeah, 500 would be long. So do you want, I mean, it's, the motion's on the floor. I mean, can we amend it back to just accepting the offer, or we can still go back with an not to exceed? We're kind of hearing two different things, so I just want to make sure we know what we're going back with. Are we going to counter, or are we? The motion's probably fine, we just going to need to counter. Well, so the offer is that we'll give you 22,000, but it can't have more than 500 miles more than it does right now. So oh. we, we would have to go back to them and say, we'll accept your offer, but we're going to have 510,000 10, miles. Oh, oh, that's just 500. But do you think that you can keep it under 500 between now and then? Yeah, I should. Yeah. Okay. Are you comfortable with that? Yeah. Uh, yes, that isn't what I was hearing from you before, so that's why I well, said a thousand miles. So I mean, I just don't want to lose yeah. the sale of a vehicle over no, you know a couple I, hundred I, I, miles. I talked to Derek too, and he you knows you know said what he did for a couple of weeks, so he understood that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So do you want to amend the motion to just be accept the bid as is? If you can confidently keep it under 500. Yeah. Okay. I'll make that amendment. Okay. Offer a friendly amendment. And I'll be very careful. <laughs> and I will accept your friendly amendment <laughs> because it was friendly. <laughs> you always say that. <laughs> Okay, so all those in favor of um, adopting the bid through the amended motion, please signify by saying aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Did you have standard? Did you? I probably should have stayed, I guess. Okay, so we'll do 301. Great. You want to let Eric know? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Great. That takes us through public works. Um, next up is visitors. Um, go in the order folks showed up to the meeting. So Sue, do you have anything for visitors? No, I, no, I don't. Nope, okay. Nope. Great. Linda, hi. Uh, hello. How are you? I'm here as animal control. I just want to tell you, give you some information because I've been doing the census, and um, I've spent about seven hours so far, and I've probably found about 40 dogs, but I haven't really done a lot of, I mean, I might have done eight miles, like Fuller Bridge. Wow. Right, Fuller Bridge, you know, um, Green Mountain, the village, um, Main Street, and North Main. And so I just wanted to ask you if it's possible to have Brent help me because it could take me quite a while to do this. You know, it does, it took me longer than I think because, I mean, if there's a dog that's licensed, I don't go to that house. Mm -hmm. But there's many houses I don't know. Yeah. And when I go to some houses, there's, I don't even know who lives there if they're rented, but I know there's dogs there. Yeah. And I know they're not licensed because I have a list of, I yep. So I just wanted to know if, if he, he could do something like on this side of town and we could get it done faster because there's a lot of dogs out there, you yeah. know? And, and most people are very nice. They don't know, they forget, you know? So, and another thing is you can't find um, veterinarians that will take on new clients. So if you don't have a relationship with a vet, it's hard to get an appointment. Yeah. And there is, there is um, Heather Skilling is a mobile vet mm -hmm. and she will come and do that because vets won't even give a rabies vaccine if they don't know you because I've called three of them around here. So Heather Skilling and someone will do that, it might cost, I don't know how much it would cost, it might cost 50, 60 bucks just to get a rabies shot. But anyway, that's not your worries. 
But then um, another thing is the forms. I saw you had the forms tonight on there. And I really, now that I'm doing this, I want to tweak some of them. Um, because, and, and this is another thing, when I did the census last time, I would give a notice to someone, I'd hang it on their door, and it says 10 days to respond. If they don't respond in 10 days, I send another warning. And then in that warning, it says if you don't do it in the next 10 days, then you get fined. Mm -hmm. So, but the, the ordinance doesn't say that. The ordinance says if you don't do it in 10 days, you get fined. So I just want to tell you that I'm not really following the ordinance, okay. word for word, but I think it's fair because it's hard for people. I mean, I had one woman who has no money. She hasn't had a dog to a vet in years. And she's like, there's no way I can do this. Mm -hmm. So, okay, and this brings me to the third thing. If I ever had to impound dogs, which yeah. it says in there, but really, I don't want to do that. I have talked to Franklin County Animal Rescue and they're willing to do a contract with us. I don't know what the fees are, that's something. I, I adopted a dog from them the other day, so I asked them if that's something they would consider, and they said yes. So uh, there's no specifics or anything like that. Cool. But, you know, I just was wondering if you wanted me to look into that further, because there's no, if I did have to impound a dog, where would I put it, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I don't really want to, bring strange dogs to my house, especially if they're not vaccinated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so, and that's it. Well, that'd be great. So I think if you want to follow up with that Franklin County Animal Rescue, just to understand kind of what they were thinking, that'd be great just to know. Um, and then with the forms and the ordinance, so. Like maybe, maybe we would work like a contract with them. And so maybe they would be willing to draw something up like that and oh, give yes, it to you and to look at it. Would be the ones who would probably draw it up and then we would either by bite or said, no, we can't do that. In the past, you know, they would um, hold the dog for up to seven days, and it was $25 a day board, and then there was a, a transfer fee that they charged, and I think that was 25. I'm sure that's way more, this was like 15 years ago, you mm -hmm. know, so I'm sure it's much more than that. So okay. it's good, people don't want to have their dogs in the you know? So, yeah. And, and I don't want to do that either, you know? So, um, I just, I do have some of the, some of the forms, like I noticed there's no place, if I give it to someone, there's no place to have them sign it. Yeah, yeah. It's like I sign it, but I really like to have that person sign it so yep. it acknowledges that I gave them the paper. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. so I think what I recommend on the forms, because I know that the board, we were talking and there was some edits that were being made at the table, um, but I haven't had any, um, any, edits back yet to, to my, my hope was to get some edits last week to incorporate and then bring back tonight for revisions and review. Mm -hmm. But if you've got, if you can just email me kind of a list of the edits that you'd like. What I can do is combine them with other edits board members had and then we can put them all together for review. Well, I was going to see, because Liz has them on her computer, I was going to say, this is, could you change this and this? And then I could submit them to you. That works just as well, too. You know, so you don't have to, then yeah. you could look at them and say, okay. I mean, most of it is very good, Sorry. you know, but I just want to. Yeah, that'd be great. And then what I can do is um, uh, just get the ones that we had noted to, to Liz for incorporation as well. Um, so that when you sit down to go over it with her, um, since she's got the drafts, then um, you can just make sure everything's there and then we'll get them back and we can adopt them at the next meeting. Yeah. Okay, and so what about Brent? Yeah, so I think that sounds fine. And I think what I'd also say is just not only in helping you with covering area, but I think that I think no one here has a problem with you ever asking Brent to help, especially if you're going to a house that you're not familiar with. Well, I, yeah. he's going to be going to different houses. Yeah, but I'm just saying, in, right. a, in addition well, he to actually that. actually came with me. I had a complaint, and he, I didn't even ask him. He just came and sat outside. I didn't even know he was there. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, any, yeah. Anytime you ever yeah. need Brett for help, by all means. But as far as assisting with the yeah. census, um, I don't have a problem. No. 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 So, and so, I, also, he get paid the same thing that I do. Um, as the census taker. Yeah, the difference would be whether we pay him the cost of a wage. Uh, it's about eleven dollars an hour difference. Okay. What I get, than he gets. Okay. You're like eleven dollars lower than what he's getting. Pardon? Are you eleven dollars lower than what he's getting? Higher. Higher. Mm -hmm. 
Well, <laughs> part of our part That's of because our because I asked for it. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, well, part right? of our part of our review of contracts and stuff tonight, and some of that, Brent is on the list because Brent did request because of the fact that we haven't raised the constables rate in years. Okay, so then I guess the motion would be um, to uh, basically appoint Brent to assist with the dog census. Okay, that's that's it. As long as you guys are okay with it, would that be at the hourly rate of Linda? Yep. Yep. Or of the dog off, current dog officer? And yep. the mileage rate. The mileage rate. Of course, he probably gets that. I have a question for you. Um, so, say you, uh, you have an unlicensed dog who needs to be vaccinated, and you file a the paper, the first round of paperwork with them and that person makes an appointment, but it's a month and a half out. Well, that's a tricky one, Yeah, you know? Maybe submitting the paperwork, or submitting that you have an appointment. Yeah. I also yeah. wanted to ask you, Linda, what is the possibility for you to call around? I know that there's a few local animal clinics that will set up like a low-cost rabies clinic, and I know that they typically do it in the spring, so this right. isn't the, the season, but I, I think that that's because of when registrations are due. Right. Yeah, and right. so I just, I wonder if as a public service for our town, like maybe we, maybe we could we offer another one. Two veterinarians to do that. You yeah. have to, the ones that I use in Enosburg and Newport Center, and they can't do it right now. Okay. But I could call other veterinarians. But I know the one in Hyde Park used to do that, but didn't want to do it anymore after two years ago. But but Does Heather do that? Does she have clinics? Well, you know, that's the person I haven't asked yet. You know, Heather is very good. Mm -hmm. She's the most of that. You yeah. Know? So, yeah. I mean, I would ask her. As a matter of fact, I called her today to ask her some other questions. So, I will ask her about that. Yeah. yeah. Because that would be very good. I mean, you know, I mean, I see what you're saying, you know, and, and it is hard to get an appointment now. And unless you have a relationship with a vet, you're not going to get in. I mean, they won't even take you as a new client because I've called them. Um, so how do you do that? I mean, we really don't want to impound dogs, but we don't want everyone to, you know, say, oh, you know, and, and you know, because that means me following up for a period of time that you might not want to pay me to do. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't know. I will, a lot, I don't charge when I, I call people on the phone sometimes that I know because many friends of mine are not licensed yet either. So I call them on the phone, and so I don't charge for that time. I don't charge, you know, I got a complaint last week about a dog in a car. When I got there, it wasn't there. So I had to go down there, but I didn't charge for that either, you know? So I try not to charge unless I have to, you know, because it's my town too, you know, and I don't want to. But I will look into that. Thank you so much. I just I think that that could maybe be a way to alleviate some of the the pressure on people and allow them to to get it done and follow through. And I, I gotta say I've talked to three other communities. Don't do this. They don't do the census. And I was like, well, you know, it's required by state statute. And they're like, yeah, but the select board or whoever town manager just doesn't worry about it. So. Huh. I'm sure there's a lot of dogs out there that are not licensed, but, you know, we haven't done it for, like, three years, so people are just not thinking about it, I guess. Yeah. And as well, far as really not fair to people that are doing the license. Well, it's true. Yeah. It's true. You know, yeah. that's... that's. Carly? Yes? Um, Linda, do you think that Heather would be willing to, you know, come to the town, like, you know, well, you I'm going to ask her. I'm going to ask her. And do a clinic? That's what we were just talking about, so Linda's going to ask her. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see. I didn't hear that part. I, I, well, I'm I far hear. away from the speakers, so. Yeah. But no, right. I am going to ask that. Um, yeah. But she was she was great when I had to deal with the Amadon Road uh, Oh Yeah, problem. Yeah, she is. She's very good. She's very smart, too. Yeah. And she does a, a little more natural type vet care, if possible. Yes, homeopathic, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's all I wanted to say. Just wanted okay. to let you know I'm cruising along and 
Cool. And everybody's very nice. I haven't had one person give me a hard time. But one person did not wouldn't tell me their name. I was wouldn't like, tell you their name? <laughs> I was at their house, their dog isn't licensed, lovely little dog. And I said, Well, I, I can you tell me your name? No. So what do I do? Doesn't yeah. their name have to go on the license? But they're a renter. Yeah, it would have to go on the license. But they're the one who doesn't have any money, hasn't brought their dog to a vet in six years, oh. and they wouldn't get an appointment. I mean, I offered to actually help her, yeah. but I, so she'll have to tell me her name eventually, but she wouldn't tell me her name. Okay. Well, and that... I don't, so when I send her a second notice, I don't know what to write on there, because the second notice I usually mail, mm -hmm. so I don't have to go back to the people's okay. houses. Okay. Yeah. So the motion on the floor is still to appoint Brent um, oh. motion to appoint Brent to assist with dog census at the hourly rate and mileage reimbursement um, for dog officer. I'll second. I thought you made the no, motion. No, you made the motion. I will second the motion. Second. <laughs> motion. <laughs> um, great. Um, any discussion? Just one thought was um, given the like income status of some of our community members and taking that into consideration. Is there something that, like, can the town, like, I don't know. It's, I'm just it's, thinking. It's like, 15 bucks for a license? Yeah, but I'm thinking of the shot, like, going to get a rabies shot is not $15. No, I'm just asking, is the current The current bucks. license fee is, like, if you're late, I think it's 13 or 15 so it's... Well, it's 8 bucks if you're... Yeah, it's, it's 9, nine and, and 11 if yeah. you're on time. Yeah. So even the late fee is not bad, but the first fine is $15. Yeah. So that makes it even harder for someone who can't afford it, because then they have to pay, say, the 11 or 15 plus the 15, yeah. you know, and to get a vaccine, I'm sure, to get a vaccine even from Heather, it's probably going to be 50 bucks to come to your house and yeah. give you that. Yeah. Maybe. So I'm just wondering if there's some way we can, like, I don't know, for a rate, like, if you get the vaccine, we'll waive the fee. I don't know. It's, don't know. Well, it's very is, tricky, but it's very like, hard when you have an ordinance. You have to yeah, follow. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's hard. Yeah. For, I mean, I try and work with people. You know, I even spent some of my own money sometimes to help people, but I'm. I, you really can't change. You know, because yeah. like you said, it's not fair to to right. us who do license on time. Yeah, you yeah. know. But I think the way that we can help is by reaching out to different vets to see if somebody yeah. would be willing to do a rabies clinic because then when they do it, it's super cheap. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. You're right. And it's super local. Yeah. yeah. That's true. So I, th I think that that's our well, first we'll step. We'll see you. Yes. Because well. the, the, veterinary, the veterinarians that I go to are pretty reasonable, but some of them, like Mora Valley, is, is pretty high. Yeah. And I don't even know if, I, if the uh, animal medical hospital is in Hyde Park anymore. Because I know that doctor retired, Dr. Stevens. Mm -hmm. He's the one who wants to do those things. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. All right, so um, any other discussion on the motion? Yeah. All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please identify by saying aye or raising your hand. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great, so we've appointed um, Brent to assist you with the okay, census. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Linda. Thanks, Linda. Thanks so much, Thank Linda. you. Bye-bye. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Although well, part of me thinks, like, if you can't afford to take care of your dog, don't get a dog. Yeah, well, yeah I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm more, I'm more open to someone being like, hey, I can't afford some of the work that needs to be under my car to get it registered because, like, a car or something, but, like, you need to get to work, but, like, equation being like, oh, I bought a boat I don't need, but I can't afford to do the work on it to get registered. It's like, can you help me out? It's like, don't buy a boat. Like, I don't know. It's yeah. like a bad analogy, but yeah. Um, all right. Takes us through visitors. Nobody else hopped on Zoom. Nope. Great. Um, old business. Real quick um, updates on the wastewater and streetscape projects. So wastewater is now moving along based on the meeting we had last week. Thanks everybody for taking the time for that. Um, the streetscape projects. So I was hoping to have the final engineering service agreement for the work that Coral Tanner is doing with the center tonight, but they don't, they don't have it ready because I had a meeting today with VTrain's Coral Tanner um, Mark was on it yeah. for some. Um, they're still trying to tweak 
that last little bit of edits they had to the agreement. So we don't have that tonight for adoption. Um, we did give them a uh, an okay to proceed on two tasks that were in that, just because of the field season aspect of it. So if some, anyone's noticed survey crews on Main Street, yeah. they have been doing the survey work. So we did give them notice to proceed prior to signing the engineering service agreement, just because of the basically acknowledging that scheduling that subcontractor and getting that work done is important. So they are working on that right now. So we should have the engineering service agreement for that streetscape work in the village or in the center by next meeting for formal adoption. So just as a reminder, that work was going to focus on the center and the village. It came back with with a response to the RFP with a budget that was way more than we thought it was going to be. So we asked them to basically drop the village from the engineering part there, focus on the center, and they came back with um, a revised budget for that work, just focusing on the center. And this is being funded through the TAP grant um, that we got. So that is um, $300,000. We do have 75,000 match commitment, um, which we talked about in the past. The kind of thing we're gonna have to look at when the final ESA comes out for this is what the final number falls at because I do know that their budget is over the combined TAP budget. I don't know exactly how much, I don't think it's like exorbitant, but we are gonna to wanna to address that so that we know either how we're gonna cover that extra cost for that engineering work, or do we ask them to scale back? I mean, we'll figure that out when we have the number in hand. Yeah. But, um, so that's coming. The other thing that we need to make a decision on tonight though is so in tandem with the engineering work that we're looking to advance. We did submit a Northern Board of Regional Commission ask for a million dollars to fund the first phase of construction work in the center, which would be going from the rec center all the way up through River Street. Um, they came back last week and said, hey, if, what if we gave you guys 800,000 instead of a million? Um, we can go back and say, yeah, we'll take it. Um, I mean, it's $800,000 that we wouldn't have otherwise. It's not a million bucks. Um, the initial cost estimate that we got for construction, now this is based on all the preliminary work. This would get refined based on the engineering work they're doing now. So this is just a, a budget to kind of put out there as a marker as far as plans go. But the budget for that construction of that first phase, um, based on the preliminary work, was $1.1 um, and so if NBRC comes back 800,000, then we need to go find 300,000 to kind of... 1.1 1 .1 million for just that first phase. Yeah. So the other part of that is that if we're gonna do the whole thing, we gotta find even more money. So we're already in this position where we're trying to find more money to support this work. And we've got, um, we have things we're chasing down such as, um, uh, bike and ped grants through the state. There's additional ARPA money that's out there we can go after. There's safety money from the straight, Safe Streets for All program. So we're starting to investigate these things. We just don't have any of it locked right now. And so we're trying to do similar to like the wastewater project where we just started to bring in capital sources and stack them up. So at this point, if we say to NBRC, 800,000 is better than nothing, um, they would then go through and process that. We could, at the end of the day, give the money back. Like in saying yes, at this point, we're not on the hook for anything other than them processing the paperwork and getting that going. I really don't want to go back to them and say, here's your money back, because we already did that with the wastewater project. Um, so it's, it's a little one of these we're making a decision without having all the pieces in place. It's not putting us at any risk other than reputational, really. Um, at this point, if we said yes to NBRC, then we would essentially need to go back and revise the budget we gave them to match what they're giving us, um, and then continue chasing additional dollars. We would just have to make up a bigger deficit to fund that first phase of construction. 
Does that make sense? So, just thoughts on that. Again, it's if we want to make the work happen, we're going to have to go out and get money to do it. NBRC is saying they could potentially give us eight hundred thousand. So we would be starting for eight hundred thousand and not zero. The question is, we'd still need to go chase down the rest of the money to finance construction. And this is just for that, like the sidewalk up from the rec center across all the way down the street. Yeah, this would be for, so we don't have the exact, so again, we're, we're trying to get money for construction in place prior to having the final design altogether. Mm -hmm. So once they have the final design work through the engineering work they're doing now, then we'd know exactly how much it's going to cost for this first phase and what would go into it. Because one of the things I talked about today with the crew is that there's public information meetings kind of in the timeline for the project. So they would come back and say, okay, we took the preliminary design, we now have the survey work in hand that says what will fit where and how this might actually work. Here's what we're thinking. And then that's when we can go back and say, okay, we like this, we're not a big fan of that. Um, and that's when we could say, well, wait a minute. We don't. We can't take over the main street. We need to change these things. That would be when yeah. we'd have to make the formal decision. That's my biggest fear: is we're gonna drop that plow and not drop the plow through main street. We're gonna have to take care of it because that's gonna be very costly in this town. So the question there is that, like in the winter time, they plow the state highway basically around the clock. Pretty much. I mean, you know, they have to. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas we go out and do a final pass. We'll do a final pass sometimes not till 8 o'clock at night, but then, you know, we're back in at 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. You know, I mean, but, um, yes, and, but the state is out just about 24-7. You know, they have different crews. They have a couple of different crews. Yeah, they come and go. And the issue yeah. is that if too much is changed. Well, if we have to take that over, then we're looking at keeping that section of road open. No, nope, that's not what I'm asking. I'm asking yeah. if we change... We can change what their design is. So v to a certain is happy. So extent? To a certain extent, so V-Trans is happy with it, so they'll keep plowing. Do they still and plow through Bakersfield? Because v yeah, they still do Bakersfield. So what about Bakersfield. Enosburg Falls? Is that... The no, Enosburg does their own main street. And so they... Yeah. But Enosburg has all the little side streets, so... It's not that big a deal for them to. But they're not plowing the side streets all night, right? So I, I'm just curious. I, I'd like to ask Joey, hey. When how do you Joey, it'd be the village. It'd be the village. Oh, the, Joey doesn't do Main Street. There's a, yeah. There's your East Park Park, the village, and the, yeah, the yeah. town. Well, it'd be interesting just yeah. to ask whoever's in charge of the village, you know, like. Yeah, so that'd be their manager. Yeah, yeah, what do you guys, how do you work that? What does it actually cost you? You know, what do you, how do you run it? I'm pretty sure it'd be. Maybe they do. I'm not sure. Okay, but the so the the things with like, if we, the 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 reasons why we would adopt it as a town one class highway would be, and this I'm not saying we're going to do all these things, but one would be if we redesigned the intersection at 118 and 242 to be a three way stop. Um, that's something that I think would trigger them making us take that over as a as a town highway. Um, there's road width considerations, so in some of the designs yeah. we looked at like bump outs yeah. that would help slow traffic. Um, road widths, if we go below a certain thing, then we would have to take it over. And curb heights. And all that stuff, yeah. Curb heights I'm not sure about. I, that's, that wasn't one that you mentioned oh. today. Okay. But other ones would be plantings, so if we were to try to plant along the street in a way where over time we would have kind of a, a canopy. You know, that's something that they would do. Another one is lighting considerations, certain kinds of lighting if we put it in. Apparently it would make it, we would have to basically make it a state highway. Um, there is a, a white paper in my email and in my inbox about this that I'll forward to everybody that oh, outlines okay. this much clearer. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to read it yet. It came in Friday. Oh, yeah. yeah, it came in Friday and then I was out of town this weekend and so I didn't have a chance to read it. But I will forward that to everybody so you can get an idea of what that means. I mean, I believe we're probably going to have to plow the sidewalks, and that might be part of it. Yeah, I mean, if we if we put in 
you know, new sidewalks, we'd have to make the decision if we want to plow in the winter. I mean, we don't currently plow our sidewalks. No. I'd like to plow in the winter. I'd like to make sure we have open sidewalks. And being some towns have like a, a little person, no, but in front of their house, the people take care of their home yeah. sidewalks or something. Yeah. Yep. We have to look at the different options. We have to figure that out. But, so I'll forward yeah. the stuff on the class one town highway thing. Um, but yes. I mean, you do get you do get state aid, probably more state aid for a class one town highway, but you're only looking at a mile. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see how much that would be. Yeah, what the state aid comparison is. And that was something yeah. that came up today. I think it's in the white paper that he sent. But because I we get more state aid for the class twos, we get threes. Yep. You know, because of, yeah. So. The class one, I've never dealt with the class one. So. Yeah. So there's stuff we have to chase down there. There's stuff about the design we have to figure out. But the decision point tonight is, is the board comfortable telling NBRC basically, yeah, we'd like $800,000 to assist with this work, given that there's uncertainty about how the rest of that will stack up. So they said they were roughly about 40% done with the survey. Um, is that just for that first phase? Or? No, that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. So the engineering work that's being done is for the whole center. Oh, okay, from the rec center to the corner. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's basically to come back with the full scope of plans for, you know, if we want to move forward. So that's 40% though. The survey work. Is, yeah, that's what they said. Yeah, not the engineering work, just yeah, the survey. Yeah, the survey. Yeah. 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 How long do we have to respond to Northern Borders? I mean, they asked us last week. Uh, Christy was out of the office all last week, so she's just getting back in now. But she did send me a note today, like, hey, have you guys talked about this? I think they want an answer this week. Mm -hmm. They like to get these awards out and notifications out, you know, by the middle of August. So again, it's not like if we say anything, we're putting our neck out that we're going to be on the hook to repay $800,000. Yeah. I mean, it's just... We're saying we'll take hundred thousand dollars, eight hundred thousand dollars, and we're acknowledging for us that like if we move forward with construction on phase one and or both phases, we're still gonna have to go, we're still gonna have to go out and chase down more money, which we're actively working on. I mean, this is like the story of both projects for the last five years. <laughs> By we, is that just you? Yeah. Well, we have some help with this one through. Uh, Regional planning as well. Okay. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the the I think the reason I think if we said no, I think the reason would be that we're not we're not planning on moving forward with construction of any of this. Um, if that's the case, then we need to seriously reconsider what we're doing with this engineering work because <laughs> if we shouldn't be doing engineering work if we're not planning on actually doing anything. Yeah. I mean, I would say that eight hundred thousand dollars is a pretty significant award, and you know, a worst case scenario, if we have to give it back, it's because this project's not happening anymore. Yeah. So reputation, or not, like aside, like it's sort of irrelevant, sort of a moot. Like, yeah. You know, so I would, I would say, I would make a motion to accept this. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. If there's no, there's no like motion formally because it's not like they're giving us anything that says. Here's eight hundred thousand. It was more like, hey, you guys asked for a million. What if we give you eight hundred thousand? <laughs> like so, I mean, they could come back and say we're going to give you nine hundred, or we're going to give you a million, or we're going to give you eight hundred. This was more kind of like taking the temperature mm. in their eyes. Like, okay. hey, does this would this work for you guys? How does that sound? You can say it doesn't work. You want a million. <laughs> I, mean, I, I guess like if we were at a point now where the funding stack was so complete that an eight hundred thousand dollar award would put us 200,000 in the hole and we were like, we've exhausted all options and we went back and said, this won't work for us because at this point, we still have a lot more money to go out and try to find and so it just makes our hole a little bit deeper. And again, that's not a hole that we're on the hook for, it's a hole that we have to go out now and, and fill. Well, I think it'd be foolish to turn down eight hundred thousand at this point. I mean, we want to move forward with this project. I mean, is anybody not comfortable telling MBRC that we would take eight hundred thousand? I'm not on the hook for it. Yeah, I think that we 
thing that we need to Keep tell working. them. <laughs> yeah, we would definitely accept that. And if they, you know, can dig deeper in their pockets and come up with a million, we would love that too. But yeah. Okay. Well, if no one's bringing up any red flags or, you know, feels strongly that we shouldn't give them the green light on that, then I will get back to Christy and let her know that we're comfortable moving forward with that. We'd rather have a million, but, yeah. Okay. And again, just to say it one more time, like, this isn't committing ourselves to anything that we can't get out of in the future, so there's no, like, budgetary impact there within BRC, it's just we have to find more money. May not be, I mean, we don't find more money. Yeah, if we don't find more money, we can't build it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. And then it's the same thing yeah. we talked about with the wastewater projects <clears throat> where we said, look, if we can't make this work out to a place that's affordable, we're not going to do it. So that's why we've worked so hard to make it what it is. Okay, I'll let Christy know that, and then as soon as we hear back on whatever, we'll, we'll do it. Uh, old business, item, item B here, we talked about this, under visitors. Um, uh, website updates, quick update Emily. Quick update is there is a lot of work that's happening on the back end to get files and data management systems and all sorts of things that are like way out of my wheelhouse and I don't completely understand fully functional um, and that Zach is shooting for rolling out new website at the end of August um, he's been working really hard Liz has been absolutely incredible in sending him all the information that he requests in you know like an immediate time frame, which is just like outstanding. Um, we've had a couple of meetings just, you know, to keep information flow going. So just want people to know that that project is, it's underway and it's a lot oh, wow. of work that I yeah. don't understand, but we're, we're driving the ship toward getting it Good. wrapped up by the end of summer. Nice. So hopefully first of September, well, the new town website that's like oh. navigable and easy. User friendly. Super user friendly from what I've seen. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Cool. That's awesome. Well, great. Thanks for mm -hmm. keeping after that. Yep. Um, if there's no objection, I just want to pass over all business then D to personnel contracts for one second and just hit changes in posting location. So I put, oh, this, yeah. I put this on here because. 90, oh. 91 Main Street is no longer open to the public. 98. 98 Main Street. I used to live in 91 Main Street. 98 Main <laughs> Street is no longer open to the public. And then in the village, the, where they've put the new temporary post office boxes is covering the municipal oh, board. Yeah. So there's still a bulletin board in there. It's just the normal anything go with bulletin board. Um, that site isn't ours, so we technically can't say to them like, hey, we're taking over this bulletin board because <laughs> it's not our building, it's not our bulletin board. Um, the, you know, prior to that, we had our own one in there. It was an agreement that we had made whenever, and so it was fine. So right now, the only posting location, the physical one that is still open is this one here. Um, so we need to come up with two more mm -hmm physical posting locations. Do they have to be on municipal property? Uh, no. Well, I guess post office was not municipal. No post office. There's the Jolly Bulletin Board, Community Events Bulletin Board. Uh, I know we stopped and read it, but it's there. Jolly, the Jolly has two bulletin boards, one on either side. Thanks, you. Yeah, yep, that's an option. Mm -hmm. So we can ask the Jolly. Um, I'm sure that we could post something at the school once it's open. I mean, it is open. I mean, they're doing summer school. It's not open all the time, but that yeah. could be. Well, wow, there's a lot. Yeah, people still in. Yeah, there's a yeah. decent number of people still in and out, though. 
that would only capture the like yeah. audience parents. of parents most likely. Mm -hmm. Um, Sylvester's have bulletin boards. Yeah, but those are usually pretty crammed. Yeah, yeah, they are. The ATM. Yeah, that's true. The ATM doesn't technically work because depending on whether or not someone shuts the door, it's not a public building. Oh, that's true. Yeah, it's yeah it's you can't simple. get in. I mean, we could also say that we could also post notices on the door of 98 Main Street. Oh, on the door of the building itself. Yeah, but if nobody's, nobody's going in the building, then yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's this like weight of you want to post it where people go, but at the same time, like people want to find information, they have to like do a little bit of work on their part, <laughs> you know. Totally. Uh, so the jolly, the school. Jolly. Yeah, Sue. Yep. Um, at one time. We had a bulletin board um, outside of the at, the, at the center post office. And it was uh, just, you know, two boards and, a, and we had plexiglass and we were able to put notices on there. Uh, you locked the plexiglass at the bottom. Um, you know, maybe we could just get somebody local to fashion a bulletin, you know, that again. It was like two posts and then a big square, and it was covered with a piece of plexiglass that had a lock. Wouldn't that? Because apparently they're taking out the mailbox this week. Apparently they're taking out what mailbox? The what? What would you the say? The outside yeah. mailbox? Yes. Huh. They're taking away the outdoor mail drop box. Yes. Huh? Who told you that's that? That's what Judy. That's what Judy told Elsie, because Elsie specifically asked, would that box ever become a, a regular mailbox for people to drop mail in? And Judy said, no, they're going to be removing that box. Nice of them to tell us. Okay. It doesn't seem like they're planning on coming back to that building if they're removing. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to speculate what they're yeah. doing, but. They did just pay their August rent. We oh, cashed it. Yeah. But what what about what about what the rec center? Calling, uh, uh, yeah. A bulletin board, you know. A, I mean, the MCA has a, a plexiglass. But how many people are going to go to that building now and read a notice when there's no reason for them to go to that building? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you the know? rec the rec center is another option. The school, the jolly. What if we had like a little board out here because when it's closed, they can still see it. You could just post it on the door. Well, I mean, the, this this posted in here. But yeah, this still of, works to post in here because it's a of, it's yeah. a public building with posted hours. Yeah. So the, I think I think here is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I would say definitely the Jolly is a okay. Valid. Well, I will ask the Jolly if we can start to post municipal notices there. Um, and then I guess I can talk to Sandy about the school. I mean, it seems like those two places. Yeah, and then the rec center would be the backup. Okay. All right. Well, I will chase down those options, and hopefully we can make a decision on that at the next meeting. All right. That was it for there. So um, the last and only other thing on our agenda item um, agenda for this evening is the personnel contract renewals. Um, and so um, this is an item that can be held under executive session because if we're talking about contract negotiations, um, we don't want to do it in public because it would put one party at a distinct disadvantage to the other having it be public conversations. So basically it's, um, it's allowed under executive session under 1 VSA 313 1A contracts. Um, so is there a motion to enter into executive session for this discussion? I'll make a motion to enter into executive session for this discussion. Is there a second? Yes, I'll second the motion. Okay, in discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of entering into executive session, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Great. So we are now in executive session.